I'd like to bring the regular meeting to order at 7.05. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for a moment of silence. Drop the Allegiance, please. Everyone, please stand and remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. Hey, I have a motion to approve the board meeting agenda, please. I'll motion. By any second. Second by Kara. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. All right. Uh, first order of business is the approval of the results of the canvas and the vote and adoption of the resolution declaring the results of the annual election held on May 16th. This will be a roll call vote. John, do you want to speak on that? Yes, please. Before you vote on all the updated results, they're adding to our website this afternoon. They're just slightly different because of uh, things like uh, collection of absentee ballots and uh, reviewing documents of people who voted on paper because uh, we had to double check to make sure they truly were registered voters for the Orange County Board of Elections. Um, so they changed by uh, one or two votes from last night. But uh, for the budget, yes votes 753 and no votes uh, 173. For the $12 million capital project, yes votes 758, no votes 164. For the purchase of 150 Pike Street, 698 yes, 232 no's. For the land swap with the city of Port Jervis, 756 yes, 177 no. Proposition number five, which is to shorten the walking distances, uh, was 801 yes, 130 no. And then in the Board of Election results, Bill Onifrey had 760, Nancy Dunn 708, Judy Amato 613, Michael Witt 560, and Flo Santini 556. So they've just changed a little bit by a vote or two or three or four here. And, there. and they're all posted on our website now in case anybody wants to see them. Okay, thank you. We have a motion to bring this to the floor. I'll move. I'll move. By Flo, second by Danny. Roll call vote. Judy? Yes. Danny? Yes. Bill Harris? Yes. Mike Cockenberry is absent. Jason? Yes. Kara? Yes. Flo? Yes. And I am yes. Okay. Next is the oath of office to a newly elected uh, member, Mr. Michael Witt, to a one year term on the Port Jervis School Board of Education. Okay, Mr. Wood, come on up. Please raise your right hand. I say I, Michael Wood. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Board of Education member of the Office of Board of Education member according to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Just to explain how this works, 
there were three seats for three years each, and there was a one-year seat. And the way it works is because the one-year seat was being filled by Nancy Gunn, she was appointed by the board last fall. So what happens, as soon as there's a new election, that person who earns that new one-year seat takes office right away. So Michael takes office right away. So Nancy Gunn actually goes off the board for six weeks or so, and then she's back with a new three-year term on July 1. So it's kind of an idiosyncrasy, but that's the way it works with the process. As soon as you only are appointed until you reach a point that the voters have a chance to weigh in on who the next person is. Mike, congratulations. Welcome to the board. Thank you very much. Uh, next, our presentations. Our first one is the student representative report, Jocelyn Decker. Alrighty. Good evening, everybody. My name is Jocelyn Decker, and I am a junior here at Fort Jervis High School. I am the junior student representative. Before I begin, I would like to thank the board for the opportunity to serve tonight. So highlights for our Fort Jervis High School. Youth in government, Fort Jervis had two students who won the election, Naomi Torrent and Governor, Governor Ellis Starda for Assemblyman A. Yesterday, Naomi Torrent and Landon Perkersian, along with their advisors, traveled to Albany to attend the end of the year ceremony. Last Thursday on May 11th, the first multicultural night was held in the high school cafeteria and very well attended. Thank you to Mr. Wilson for this amazing event. Last Friday as well, on May 12th, was the SAD Powder Puff Games. This event was from 6 to 9 p.m. at Chase Field. Thank you to Ms. Lane and Ms. Doherty for coordinating this event and allowing those who helped, including coaches Dr. Bell, Ms. Rosaro, and Ms. Byrne. Funds raised will be used for the senior prize giveaway night. Both teams performed well and team pride took the win. The high school spring concert was last night and both the choir and the band gave an amazing performance. There is no school for students on May 26th as this is a give back day. School will also be closed on Monday, May 29th. June 1st is the U.S. History Regents. Only students taking the test will attend. All others can sleep in. Several field trips are on the horizon. The art show is this Friday, May 19th, in the high school cafeteria from 6 to 8 p.m. The Seal of Literacy Showcase will be on Monday, May 22nd, in the high school gym from 7.30 to 9.45. On May 25th, progress reports will be distributed for quarter four. They will be available online in school four. Exciting news, the high school pep band F band will be marching in the Memorial Day Parade on Monday, May 29th. Following that, on Tuesday, May 30th, the High School Drama Club will present a Broadway cabaret at 7 p.m. Friday, June 2nd, is our senior day. They'll perform a poor pride walk. The class of 23 will be very busy with a biaculate practice. The poor pride walkthrough will be at HBE, ASK, and the 209 Complex. On Sunday, June 4th, at 6 p.m., the class of 2023 will have their triaculate service at Mary's Mercy Church. Many celebrations will be coming up as well. Character Education Celebration will be on June 7th in the morning, and the Academic Awards Night will be that night at 6 p.m. in the auditorium. Prom is also coming up. Prom will be on Friday, June 9th, and the Senior Music Awards Dinner is June 12th. Following that, scholarship night is on June 15th. Our valedictorian, Zach Anha, and salutatorian, Rachel Durier, will be guests at the Orange County Outstanding Student Luncheon on June 13th. Our senior athlete banquet will be held on June 13th from 6 p.m. at the Erie Trackside. Last but not least, the regular day of high school instruction will be on June 13th with the Regents exams beginning on June 14th and continuing until the 22nd. Thank you. Excellent report, Jocelyn. Thank you. We're going to go a little bit out of order for a few minutes because we have four or five of the top 20 kids who are in transit coming back from the sophomore. Game. So we're going to press on to the agenda and then we'll come back. So just be a little patient for the top 20. 
Next, we have administrative reports. First is uh, Superintendent of Schools, Dr. John Bell. Well, first and foremost, I just want to thank the voters. Uh, it was a great turnout. Just to give you a point of reference, last year only 592 people voted. This year, 957 voted. So there was a much, much bigger turnout after a really low turnout last year. And everybody worked really hard to get out the vote, so we really appreciate it. Um, and it was a tremendous victory. None of the, the four propositions or the budget, they were all landslide victories. So that says a lot about the community supporting stuff that's good for kids. Um, just to highlight a little bit, some of the highlights in the budget, um, college classes in high school will be going from uh, 16 courses to 30 over the next year or two. Uh, middle school honors classes, currently we have two. Next year we're going to six. The following year we're going to eight. Um, Chase Field is getting a new track and new turf. Glenette is getting uh, new lights, new scoreboard and turf. The new school on East Main Street is getting a, a whole school generator and the parking lot between the school and Great Parker Funeral Home. The high school auditorium will be renovated and the high school library will be relocated downstairs into a much larger location and a, a state-of-the-art facility. So it's a lot of great stuff for our kids. So it's a day for everybody to be proud of the things we're doing for our kids. So thank you very, very much for all of that. I had a bunch of dates to remember, but I think Jocelyn covered every one of them. Uh, the biggest day in most kids is just to remember that the last day of school for grades K through eight is Friday, June 23rd, and that's also graduation, 6 p.m. that night at Chase Field. No tickets are necessary, all are welcome. And that's all I have. Okay, thank you, Dr. Bell. Uh, next is uh, Assistant Superintendent for Instruction, Dr. Natasha Wachowicz. Good evening. Um, the District MTSS team just completed their professional workshop series for the year. We'll be presenting our two years of work at the June Board of Ed meeting. Our education committee will be meeting next Wednesday at 3.30 p.m. at the high school library. Team members can join virtually or in person and we'll be reviewing updates on curriculum, the EFSSR gear and ARP, and consolidated application for the title grants for this year and next year. Our PED committee will be meeting one more time before the end of the school year to finalize next uh, school year's conference days. Additionally, you will be releasing a summer PD workshop series, including Teachers College, Handle with Care Training, Train the Trainer, um, Curriculum Writing, a Principal Series on Connecting Curriculum with Instructional Practice, Legal Updates, and Special Education Workshops, just to name a few. So that's going to happen this summer, um, and we look forward to the end of year events. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, next, Assistant Superintendent for Business, John Tim. Thank you. So I first want to thank the board uh, for their vote of confidence in the budget process. Uh, you know, you created an environment that actually keeps me motivated and work as hard as we can. Uh, because you give me that vote of confidence, I really do appreciate that. Uh, to the staff members, some of them are sitting here that helped me with the budget and preparation, and your feedback and your input and preparation is valued. I do appreciate that. You know who you are. Uh, to the community, thanks for coming out strong with the numbers. Uh, in support of the budget and the referendum, the yes votes and the turnout make a great statement. And let's just keep it going. This district is heading the right direction under the great leadership of Dr. Bell. Um, moving on, transitioning, uh, you just got a uh, call on your phones uh, an hour and a half ago uh, with a reminder of a drill that is happening this Friday. So the district will be having two safety drills come this Friday at the 209 complex. The lockdown drill will start at 9.15 and at HB, it'll start at 2 p.m. There's going to be some law enforcement. This is what would make this a little bit different. There's going to be a law enforcement presence, both in Deer Park and uh, Fort Jervis. And I just found out Orange County Sheriff's Department as well will be present for the drill. And just remember, this is a drill. It's a learning process. It's actually, the kids know what to do. This is now a drill that would help law enforcement become familiar with the building some of the processes and you know one thing I've sent out a memo is just just take a deep breath and we're going to learn from this and we just keep getting better every time we do one of these so um, in the community I, I there's a lot that we can learn about this as well so um, 
once again, Port Jervis is getting better every day, so thank you. Thank you very much, John. All right, we want to drop back to share. Okay. At this time, I'm going to ask high school principal Anthony Lazaro to come to the podium, and he is going to introduce the class of 2023's top 20 students, including those who just came in as long as they won. <laughs> All the way. We have one on the way. Sorry. Leave show before you get done. All right. All right. Well, first, thank you for having us tonight, and thank you for the opportunity to share the top 20 with you. These students, this is about their achievement of top 20, but it's also about their effort and the growth that they've had over the course of their four years. To maintain that top 20, to be in that spot as they graduate is quite an achievement, but again, a testament to their effort. And these are not only scholars, but they are athletes, as you know, artists, and hours and hours of, of uh, community service are represented by this group. So we, again, I appreciate this opportunity. What we'll do is we're gonna count down. So if we can start with, uh, we have Julius Cruz. So Julius Cruz is headed to SUNY Sullivan. He is going to be majoring in computer programming, and his goal is to become a computer programmer. So Next up, we have Robert Bradley. So, uh, Robert is not here tonight, but Robert is undecided, but he is uh, currently at SeaTech. His goal is to uh, have a career in the fine arts. He's doing film at SeaTech, and he wants to continue to pursue that. He just hasn't decided where he's going to continue that study. Uh, next, we have Josh Fielding. So, Josh Fielding is undecided to form between a couple of spaces, but he's going to be majoring in applied science and cybersecurity. Uh, he plans on going, getting into the networking field and again, advancements in cybersecurity. As we know, that's a big field right now. Next up, and I'm, I'm hoping to see this major one is uh, Alexis Stefano. So her, Alexis Stefano is heading to Penn State University, where she coached me on this word. Kinesiology, thank you. I threw too many syllables in there. Oh, yeah, I have a hard time being from the city. So she plans to continue toward her doctorate and uh, with physical therapy, and she wants to uh, be a physical therapist and be in that field as a career. Next, we have Kendall Alden. Now, Kendall is going to pursue the purpose. She plans on studying political science, and there she, from there, she does want to attend law school and become a defense attorney. So we have, that's Kendall Alden. Bridget Seeger. Ms. Seeger. Ms. Seeger is headed to SUNY Orange. She is going to be studying library science. She wants to continue in the library field and hopes one day to be working in the Greenwich Village uh, Library there called the Center. Number 14, we have Jordan Elson. Uh, Jordan. Jordan. Jordan is going to Mount St. Mary. Uh, she plans on uh, studying education and she would like to be a math teacher. That's something we don't, we're always in theater, right? Uh, next up, but I didn't see her tonight either, um, it is Ariana Merchan Espada. She's going to the School of Visual Arts in New York City. She was one of our winners at ADAC, at the ADAC contest. She wants to study animation and hopes to open her own animation studio. Uh, we're joined tonight by Daniel Danko. So Daniel <laughs> is headed to SUNY Albany. He is looking to study computer science and also plans some minor in meteorology. In terms of computer science, what he wants to do with that, he's looking to uh, study and make advancements in artificial intelligence. So, chat GDP, for example, and all those that you've heard all about on the news of your field. Uh, next, we have Leila Shahada. I did not see her here tonight, but she's headed to SUNY Binghamton, um, she, where she plans on studying physics and computer science. We have, now we're at number 10. So, number 10, we have Paris Khan. Going to LSU, University, University uh, where she will study nursing and, and plans on being either a nurse practitioner or a physician assist, assistant. Number nine, I saw her, I believe you saw, I saw her tonight, right? Jalen. So we have Jalen Census. And <laughs> to Sue Delma, where she'll be studying veterinary science and would like to be a veterinarian technician. Number eight, Penny Jones. 
and she studies at Howard University where she plans on studying psychology and she would like to continue her studies to become uh, a uh, study in terms of a PhD and be a clinical psychologist, a clinical therapist, what I say, clinical therapist. Next, number seven, we have Jenna Wolograwski. <laughs> College, where she intends to study adolescent education, specifically English, and she hopes to be a Port Jervis High School English teacher. Did <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> Emily's Pulsinelli. So, Emily, she's also going to Mount St. Mary. She plans on studying mathematics and is looking, seeking to become a mathematics teacher. So, we have a few teachers in the field. Madison Bombos, number five. Madison Bombos. <laughs> Penn State University, Harrisburg, where she wants to study biology. She's uncertain in terms of the, how she plans on using that, but she does want to be in the field of, of the medical field. Number four. Emma Malley. <laughs> Emma is headed to Miss Accordia University, where she'll be studying speech pathology and language, and plans to be a speech therapist, and is thinking about working also in a school setting. Number three, I don't believe it's here right now, that's Miss Molly Koenig. She was also at the softball game. Uh, she's headed to the University of Harvard, uh, sports, she plans on studying sports management, and she wants, in a, and also math, right, so unique combination, what I found interesting when we were talking about this morning, she wants to be a sports analyst, but specifically, I don't know if you saw the movie Moneyball, where they kind of analyze, like, where the players are, the best value for the buck in terms of players, so she, her interest is uh, using sports and math in that way. Uh, we have number two, our salutatorian, who's headed to, to Cornell University, we have Rachel Dory. She is uh, studying uh, Applied Economics and Management at the SCE uh, Johnson College of Business. All right, and this management is great. And number one, Zach Imhoff. <laughs> our that's our valedictorian. He's Boston College. While he's undecided, he does know that he's going to be publishing books someday of his own writing, right, and, and uh, involving the arts. So this is uh, uh, most of our top four. Again, this is a group of tremendous citizens in our building, tremendously hard workers, and, and we're super proud of them. So. You'll be up on the website tomorrow, I promise. <laughs> Congratulations, Paul. <laughs> Next item, item seven, is consent agenda item. Item A, there's a minute to the May 2nd, 2023 Board of Education meeting. Item B, CSE minutes for, for April 13th through May 8th, 2023. Item C, CSE minutes for annual review of 2324 for April 13th through May 9th, 2023. Item B, the minutes to the CPSD meeting minutes, annual reviews for March 28th through April 25th, 2023. Item E, the treasurer's reports for April 2023. Item F is a request to declare surplus buildings and grounds department drop. We have a motion to bring that up. I'll move it. Moved by Kara. Second. Second. Second by Flo. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 8, our personnel employment item. Item A, resignation and structural staff position 601, special education people. Item B, resignation and structural staff position 166, special, special education people. Item C is a resignation to accept the new in district position, support staff position 3697, school monitor. Item D is an appointment 
Instructional Staff, Vacancy 2516, Position 3906, Probationary, Business and Marketing Teacher. Item B is an appointment, Support Staff, Vacancy 2534, Position 520, Permanent Secretary to the Assistant Superintendent for Business. Item F, Support Staff, Vacancy 2539, Position 478, Probationary Teacher A. Item G, Instructional Staff, Vacancy 2542, Position 601, Probationary Special Education Teacher. Item H is an appointment, support staff, and substitute cleaner. Item I is appointment, instructional staff, substitute teachers, and home instruction for the 22-23 school year. We have a motion to bring that to the floor, please. Oh. Moved by Jason. Second? Second. Second by Kara. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Yes, Annie? I'm going to abstain. Okay. One abstain. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And one abstention. Um, two veteran teachers who are joining us, they're new to us, but not new to education. Both Denise and Evan, who just got appointed. Denise and Evan can both stand and be recognized. Congratulations and welcome to the program. It's great to have you guys. We really appreciate it. Thanks for coming Thank tonight. Great. That was very nice. Thank you. Uh, next are action items. Item A is policy, first and final reading, policy number 5692. I have a motion to bring that to the floor. Moved by Bill Harris. Second? Awesome. Second by Flo. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item B is policy, first reading, policy numbers 5673 and 5677. We have a motion to bring that to the floor. Moved by Flo. Second. All second. Annie. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> All right. Uh, next are committee reports. Uh, buildings and grounds. We have not set a meeting. Nothing at this point. Okay, we need to set a meeting for that. Uh, Port Jervis, Annie? Yes. Um, the uh, events that are coming up is the PBA foot race, Saturday, June 3rd, the Fabulous 50, Sunday, June 4th, from 12 to 6 at Riverside Park. And also, um, just coming up is the Port Jervis Soapbox Derby, which is Sunday, June 11th, at 8 a.m. on Sussex Street. Okay, thank you, Annie. Uh, next is policy. Uh, Annie's not here, so I don't know if there's any. Oh, you got it, Annie? Yeah. Thank you. Well, I always do that. Okay. Sorry. Um, the Health and Wellness Committee met on May 10th. Jessica Ellsworth, the HR coordinator, presented information about our new e app, which is the Employee Assistance Program provider called NextGen. This program is a great resource for our employees who may be struggling or need assistance. Erin Flynn, Food Service Director, presented all the wonderful things going on in food service. She discussed having salad bars in the school, scratch cooking, smoothies machine, and having more fresh fruit in the school for our children. Marie Jan from the Orange County Department discussed a great called Creating Healthy, school, Healthy Schools, which Port Service is a part of. And Amy Wemmick, our school nurse at the high school, gave an update on things going on in the health office. She is involved with the EMS club, which has 12 very engaged students. She also reported the schools will be equipped with life back devices. 
These were discussed on how the schools are representing to school anxiety and depression and the use of vaping. And also, we had the safety committee met on May 10th. Dom Glasgow, the chief of police from the, from the town of Crawford, and or, um, Aaron Hopmayer, the principal of the port, oh, excuse me, of the principal of Pinebush High School, joined the meeting via Google Meet. They debriefed the community on the lockdown event that will have that happened at Pinebush High School on April 26th. Their input was very informative and initiated discussion on our lockdown procedures. Law enforcement from Deer Park. Port Jervis attended the meeting to be fair for the upcoming emergency drill. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Next is Isla. Well, I think that's on the No? Okay. Uh, DLP, Phil? Okay. Education? Oh, uh, no, next week. Okay. Uh, Deer Park, Phil? Uh, just a reminder that um, motor vehicle, the DMV van will be at the senior center in Deer Park Friday from 10 to 12 and then from 1 to 3.30. So if anybody had any motor vehicle issues, you can come and see us. We'll be at the senior center. Okay. Thank you, Flo. Orange County School Board. Bill? Yes. I'm going to try to make this as brief as possible. If you remember the last meeting, I said that we were meeting with the Orange County School Board last week and the primary discussion was going to be the mandate of turning the electric school buses into a reality. Uh, we sat for several hours with representatives from Orange and Rockland, and some of the statistics that came in were just unbelievable. Uh, I'm just gonna throw some numbers at you. Most of the school buses that are used in Orange County are what they call a type C school bus. The new electric school buses, Type C, are going to run about $400,000 a piece. A single charge takes five and a half hours, and you only get 100 to 200 miles on a single charge. The chargers cost anywhere from $2,000 to $12,000 per bus. So there are a lot more cons that we were discussing than pros, definitely. Uh, the buses have been known to explode. They're too heavy for some of the bridges in New York State. The power companies cannot afford, nor can they handle the output that needs to be put into these buses right now. So right now there are a lot of questions on the table. Uh, this discussion is far from over. We have a couple of years before we're mandated to start purchasing the new buses because the Chargers and the buses all have to be paid by the fleet operators and owners, therefore will be put back on the individual districts at that time. So we do have to watch this because uh, the numbers are just ridiculous and it's going to hit everybody in the wallet in the next few years. And then on another note, uh, Monday, May 22nd, I will be attending a public forum at BOCES for looking to identify opportunities and achievements of success throughout our communities. So I will be representing Port Jervis at that forum on Monday evening. Phil, so I have a question. Yes. Uh, has there been any mention uh, by our governor that there's gonna be monies to go along with these mandates? Yes, there is a $600 million grant that is being spread throughout the country. Very nice. <laughs> uh, also, NYSERDA, will be assisting the individual districts with grants okay. that have to be filled out. And Orange and Rockland will come out and do assessments upon uh, request by any school district that is looking to uh, update. I know cities like Middletown are actually thinking of putting bus garages on both sides of the city so they can do their runs without a problem. Because it was also discussed when we have to bring students to Syracuse we would have to change buses three or four times on the way to get there. So there are a lot of issues coming up. Uh, one of our speakers and one of our members is a current New York City firefighter that brought up a lot of valid points about fires in these buses, and it takes several days just to put the fire out in these buses. And they've been known to blow up also. Yeah. So there's a, a lot of questions that have to be answered over the next few years. Okay, Phil, thank you very much. Great report on that. Not good news, but <laughs> <laughs> so.
thank you very much. And thank you for representing us as a group. So, all right, next are board member comments. Uh, Jason, do you have anything? I don't. I'm kind of at a loss after that last thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Judy? Uh, yes, I'd like to thank everyone who came out to vote. I heard we had a record number of young, new voters, which is really exciting. I'd like to thank anyone who did support me, and I'm very happy that all the items uh, on the budget have, have passed. All right, Judy, thank you. Mike? Um, well, well um, I'm glad to be here. I look forward to working with everybody. I'm glad it was a great budget vote. The outcome for the voter turnout was incredible. Uh, hopefully, we can add a few thousand next year. Very good. <laughs> but uh, I look forward to uh, other than this busing issue, uh, jumping in right away. And, uh, <laughs> get on. And, well, like I said, it's a pleasure having you with us. And thank you very much. Danny? Yes. Um, I would like to thank the voters for coming out and passing both the budget and the referendum. And I would like to congratulate the incumbent board members that were, were that were elected, and congratulations to our newly elected board member, Michael Woods. I did attend the Kaikendo Award, and I congratulate and, and the I congratulate them, and the best of luck to the participants. And I'll tell you, when I see the students here, the twenty of them. All I can think of those little eyes coming in my house office, you know, and look at them now. I, I am just so proud. I'm proud of them all. You know, I can't wait to graduate you, you know. And I've got so many, are you coming? Are you coming? Or take my picture. But definitely, because I'm your favorite nurse. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, um, Teacher Appreciation Day. I want to thank you, all of you, for your, for your hard work, which does not go unnoticed. You are, you are most appreciative, and I thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Annie. Bill? Yes, I just want to bounce off that staff appreciation last week, and uh, we're here for you, and we enjoy working with you, and we're so glad and honored for everything that you do for our children and our community. Uh, personally, I want to congratulate the top 20. I've known most of those students since they were in seventh grade when I was over at the middle school, and I want to welcome Mike to our family. Well, no. Okay. I just want to extend my gratitude to the community for supporting the budget. Thank you. And, you know, I want to jump on that too. I want to tell you that uh, it's really wonderful to see how the community supports the children in the school district. And, you know, not only in the school budgets, but Ford has always been a very caring and giving community whether it be a fundraiser for a needy family or a sick child or whatever, I am telling you, scholarships for our students. For a small community, these people have huge hearts. And uh, I really appreciate the public for that. On another note, I had the pleasure of doing career day at the uh, ASK this morning. <coughs> I have to tell you, it was pure enjoyment. I want to thank all the uh, People that volunteered their time, doctors, police officers, uh, beauticians, uh, electricians. Uh, we had a variety of people, and I want to tell you, the kids are great. Very, very polite, and some of their questions would just make you howl. So they're, just, they're just so great. So that was a that was a wonderful experience. So uh, I think that's it. And next would be dates to remember. Long list. Okay, here, give me a second. Big list. Okay, dates to remember. Thursday, May 18th, is the Fort Jervis Middle School Spring Concert, 7 p.m. in the ASK Cafeteria. Thursday, May 18th, HBE PTA meeting, 6 p.m. at HBE. Friday, May 19th, District Art Show. 6 to 8 p.m. in the high school cafeteria. Friday and Saturday, May 19th and 20th, is the NISPA Solo Festival. It's to be determined <coughs> both for the time and the location. Friday, May 19th, progress reports are distributed for elementary school trimester three. Uh, Sunday, May 21st, is the HBE Color Run. 
uh, 8, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the outside field. Monday, May 22nd, Seal of Biliteracy Showcase, 7.30 to 9.45 a.m. in the high school gym. Wednesday, May 24th, the HBE Spring Concert, 7 p.m. in the high school auditorium. Thursday, May 25th, is the ASK Screening, 9 a.m. in the ASK Library. Friday, May 26th, High School Progress Reports, number four available on school tool. Friday, May 26th, Fort Rivers Middle School, YMCA Beat the Streets program, 6.30 to 9 p.m. in the ASK gym. Monday, May 29th, is Memorial Day, school is closed. Tuesday, May 30th, the High School Drama Club, Broadcast Cabaret, 7 p.m. in the High School Auditorium. Thursday, June 1st, is Regents Exams for U.S. History and Government at 8 a.m. in the High School. Friday, June 2nd, is Senior Day, Fort Pride Walk and Barbecue at the All Day Affair. Sunday, June 4th, is Baccalaureate, 6 p.m. at St. Mary's Church. Wednesday, June 7th, is Academic Awards, 6 p.m. in the High School Auditorium. Thursday, June 6th, is the DARE Graduation Ceremonies at ASK and HBE, 10 a.m. at ASK and HBE. Thursday, June 8th, National Technical Honor Society induction to be announced both for the time and the location. Friday, June 9th is Leadership Day uh, at the school, HBE, and also the high school prom. The time is to be announced and it's at the Best Western Hotel. Friday, June 10th, early dismissal, uh, district-wide, secondary dismissing at 11 a.m. and elementary dismissing at 12 p.m. Monday, June 12th is the high school music department dinner and awards, 5.30 to 8 p.m. in the high school cafeteria and auditorium. Tuesday, June 13th, ASK kindergarten screening, 9 a.m. in the ASK library. Also on June 13th is HBE Kindergarten with an Up Ceremony, 9.30 a.m. at HBE. In the Fort Jervis High School PTSA meeting, 7 p.m. High School Room 133. And the Board of Education meeting, Retiree Reception, 7 p.m. in the High School Cafeteria. Wednesday, June 14th, ASK Kindergarten Moving Up Ceremony, 9 a.m. in the High School Auditorium. Uh, HBE Pre-Kindergarten Moving Up Ceremony at 10 a.m. in the HBE Cafeteria. Wednesday through Friday, June 14th through the 23rd are Regents Exams all day in the high school. Thursday, June 15th, sixth grade Moving Up Ceremony, 9 a.m. at the High School Auditorium. And also on June 15th is Scholarship Night, 6 p.m. at the High School Auditorium. Mm -hmm. Friday, June 16th, Arden Hill Sea Tech graduation to be announced at the Arden Hill campus. Uh, Friday and Saturday, June 16th and 17th, Fort Jervis High, High School Drama Club Fall Show. That's Friday, 7 p.m., Saturday at 2 and 7 p.m. in the High School Auditorium. Monday, June 19th is Juneteenth Schools Closed. Wednesday and Thursday, June 21st and 22nd is Gibson Road SeaTech Graduation. Time to be announced at the Amy Bolchris campus on Gibson Road. Tuesday through Thursday, June 20th through 22nd is early dismissal, district-wide, secondary dismissing at 11 a.m. 
Elementary dismissing at 12 p.m. Wednesday, June 21st, the eighth grade stepping up ceremony, and that's to be announced for the time and the location. Friday, June 23rd, last day of school, early dismissal, district-wide. Secondary dismissal will be at 10 a.m. Elementary dismissal will be at 11 a.m. Report cards will be distributed, elementary and trimester three, and the class of 2023 graduation ceremony at 6 p.m. on Chase Field. I think you're trying to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. You got another water? <laughs> okay, special note here is the district wide safety plan is available for review by the public. Appointments can be made to review the plan with the buildings and grounds office by calling 845 858 3100, extension 17501, or by emailing lhendershot at pjschools.org. And the next board meeting will be held at 7 p.m. in the high school cafeteria on Thursday, July 6th. This will be our reorganizational meeting. And with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Move by Flow. Second. Second by Kara. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried.